Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to talk about a really old, I mean legacy, feature of Windows called file system tunneling. There's a chance you've heard of it before, especially if you've been in the field for a while. I've seen articles from Harlan Carvey and Jason Hale from more than a decade ago talking about file system tunneling. By the way, I'll link both of those in the description below. But if you're new to DFIR, this may be news to you. So let's discuss what this is, why it exists, and how its existence could potentially affect forensic examination of a Windows system. We'll start with a brief history lesson, and then we'll look at a demo showing file system tunneling in action. Windows file system tunneling is a feature implemented by Microsoft to improve the user experience, especially for operations like renaming, moving, or deleting files. This feature works by caching information about recently deleted or renamed files for a short period of time. If a file with the same name is recreated shortly after being deleted or renamed, Windows uses the cached information to restore the original file attributes, such as the creation date and other metadata. This helps ensure that operations involving rapid file manipulation don't result in a loss of important file metadata. Okay, but why is this necessary? Well, one reason is the way some software behaves when you modify a file. Normally, you would expect modification of the contents of an existing file to have no effect on the creation time of a file. However, upon modification of an existing file, some programs will actually create a new file, delete the existing file, and then rename the new file to the previous file's name. This is also similar to the safe save method, if you've heard of that, which involves creating a temporary file in which data is first written. Once the data is safely written and verified, this temporary file would replace the original file. This approach prevents data loss or corruption if an error occurs during the save process. In these scenarios, the user would expect the creation time of a given file to be retained. In other words, it would be completely unexpected if you modified a file that you created a month ago, and then upon saving that file, you saw its creation time changed. That's not supposed to happen, right? The file should only be created or born once. And in this scenario, the user was just editing a file that already existed, which should have no effect on the creation timestamp. File system tunneling will ensure the original creation time is preserved, even though this would technically be a brand new file. In doing so, the user would be none the wiser. So in short, file system tunneling can work around these potential issues and make the overall experience for the user better. Well, at least that's the idea. File system tunneling isn't just used in NTFS, but also in FAT32 and XFAT. The default amount of time for which an entry will remain in the cache is 15 seconds. This time period can be changed in the registry via the creation of a value called maximum tunnel entry age in seconds, which does not exist by default, at least not in modern operating systems like Windows 10 and Windows 11. The value is of type D word, and it's located with an HKey local machine or HKLM system current control set control file system. Of course, on a non-running system, it would be within one of the control sets, such as control set 001, 002, or so on. Remember, you can look at the system select current value to determine which control set is in use. I created this value and set it to 999. Through a lot of testing and trial and error, it appears that regardless of how high the value is set, the maximum tunnel entry age is 300 seconds or five minutes. Any value above that appears to be ignored, at least in my testing. There's another value that can be created and set called maximum tunnel entries, also of type D word under the same path. I created this value, set it to zero, rebooted, and confirmed that it did appear to disable file system tunneling. Not something I would recommend doing because it's probably going to end up breaking a lot of things in Windows behind the scenes. But now the real question that you're probably already scrambling to the comment section to type. What does this have to do with forensics? Well, for one, there's allegedly been malware in the past that's used file system tunneling to manipulate timestamps, though I don't have firsthand experience with any. That said, I've seen situations in which timestamps were clearly manipulated for which I could not find a reasonable explanation. When this involves the creation time potentially being backdated, 
file system tunneling could, in theory, be used to accomplish this. So let's check it out. Okay, let me set the stage for you. We're looking at two binaries. We have ghost.exe and we have test.exe. Ghost.exe, as you may have guessed, is the Go-based tunneling utility that's fairly popular amongst threat actors. And then we have test.exe, which is a legitimate password generation tool that I wrote many years ago. Notice that we only have one timestamp column being shown and that's date modified, which is what you're going to see by default within Windows Explorer. And by the way, the same holds true for cmd.exe. If you're at the command prompt and you type dir, it's that date modified timestamp that you're going to see by default when you type dir. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on another timestamp column. And to do that, we'll just go over here, right click and choose date created. And I'll move this column right next to date modified. Now, as a reminder, we have Mac B timestamps in Windows, right? We have M for modification, A for access, C for MFT record change, which is a metadata change, and B for birth or creation. So right now, of those four timestamps, we're looking at the M and the B, the modification and the birth or creation. Remember, we can also turn on the access timestamp, which is mostly useless in my opinion, but we don't have the ability to turn on the C timestamp, which is that MFT record change timestamp. That's not visible within Windows Explorer. Okay, that being said, the column on which I want you to focus is the date created, the B in Mac B. Notice that for test.exe, it's 9-9-2013. And notice for ghost.exe, it's 1-20-2023. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to delete test.exe with shift delete. And as you can see, I've just killed it. Now we're going to go over here and rename ghost.exe to test.exe. And as soon as I press enter, keep your eye on the date created column and notice what happened. It immediately changed to 9-9-2013. It effectively assumed the B timestamp from the previous file of the same name that was just here. That's file system tunneling in action. So if you imagine that the original test.exe was some legitimate file present on a victim machine and our ghost.exe was a threat actor tool, a tool that we wanted to bring with us to the victim machine, then what we've just done would effectively backdate our tunneling utility to a creation date of 2013, right? Specifically 9-9-2013. Now, of course, the modification timestamp is reflective of today and it is not changed but it's the creation timestamp, the B timestamp that will be affected with file system tunneling. And you can see an example of that right here. Now, another thing that we could do is just straight up delete test.exe and create a brand new file in its place called test.exe. And once again, as long as we do that within the 15 second default cache period, we should see the same effect. So let's try it. What I'm going to do is shift delete test.exe. Now we have no files. I'm going to come over to our command prompt and type copy con test.exe, which is just going to allow me to create a file at the console here. And I'll just put the word test in it and press F6 and enter. And now we've just created a new file. Obviously it's not really a PE32 binary. It's literally a text file that has the word test in it. But regardless, it is a brand new file that is four bytes in size that we just created. Now, if we exit this and switch back over to here, check it out. We have our new test.exe file that we just created and it once again shows a creation time of 9-9-2013. Pretty cool, right? So that's file system tunneling in action. And I'm sure you can think of all sorts of ways that this could potentially be abused by a threat actor. Again, it's not going to affect the M or modification timestamp, just the B or birth timestamp, but still it could potentially be used in a not so legit manner, shall we say. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this look at a rather obscure Windows feature that you may not have known about. If you found this episode useful, be sure to give it a like. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next 13 Cubed episode.